Hi all. Today we will discuss something on openings in beams. Why do we need openings in beams? Let's discuss that first. Generally, MEP services, mechanical, electrical and plumbing needs a lot of openings in your beams so that they can take out various services lines through the beams. So that's a primary requirement. Now there can be a question that why can't we take this under the beams? Why can't we take the electrical and other services pipes under the beams? The main problem is that if you do it below your beams, what happens is you might lose say around 150 to 200 millimeter per floor. So assume that you are losing a floor height of 150. So you cannot have a headroom less than what is actually required. So you will raise the height of that particular room. That means that say 150 millimeter you are losing in one floor. Assume that you have 20 floor building and that means that your building height will have to be raised by around 3 meters. Now what if the total floor height or the total building height has a restriction say you have 60 meter restriction in a particular site due to various government regulations you could build around 20 floors in such a case and if you have to accommodate these leaves you will lose one floor the builder will have to go for a 19 floor building instead of 20 and that creates a lot of difference in his profit so generally builders might be hesitant to accommodate the pipes under the beam so that's the reason that you will need openings in the beam and then keep the total floor height lesser if you ask me what is better then definitely it's better to run the services under the beam so that the structural integrity is better now is core cut allowed can we drill the beam after concreting and then pass the services through that the answer is no that will affect the integrity of the structure and it's a strict no you should not be doing it at best what you could do is you can have planned openings in beams wherein you already leave a pipe in the beam before concreting and then later run the services through that you can remove this temporary pipe and then run your services through that so a planned opening is called a sleeve which is allowed but then you also have to take care of the design by various code recommendations if you are keen on that design aspects please look at the video description where you will get a link to my blog where i have explained the design requirement a bit more clearly which sleeve is okay in this particular diagram which i have given here which sleeve is okay now if you look at the bending moment diagram you can see that you have tension zones at the support top zone and at the span bottom zone so this gives you an idea where you will have to give the sleeve because in a structure in a beam the tension is taken care by the reinforcement and compression is taken care by the concrete section so in the tension zones your concrete is not taking any tension and hence you can afford to have a sleeve in the tension zone so if you ask me four and one are tension zones here and there you can allow sleeves if it's a minor opening then you will have to ensure that the cover to rebars are not compromised you are restricting the opening sizes to a small size say around 100 millimeter to 150 millimeter and the spacing between two sleeves are also taken care now if the sleeves are large in size then there are more design considerations that you have to give so i suggest you go to the description of the video and check out the blog given there and in case if you are keen to learn nuances of consulting similar to this sign up for my training programs so that's all i wanted to tell you this video thank you for watching and have a great time we will see in yet another video very soon thank you very much